Regal and Tajiri are ranting about Angle when Undertaker arrives and is upset to learn his main event... Learning! News to him, his main event match with Booker T is not a title match. The WCW title is not in the line. So he asks, am I not worthy? Which is a great question here. <laughs> so, well, Kurt Angle apparently wasn't worthy to get a whatever belt Lance had shot. I guess not. That's... There were three matches in the show of champions, and initially none of them were title matches. So Regal starts to say something about the matches for pride, and Undertaker says, I've got plenty of pride. I'd like the title. <laughs> this is the most logical, rational Undertaker promo ever. And so Regal says... You know you why? Because can... there were guys back then that cared about their own character and were willing to say, this shit sucks. Basically, This yeah. is uh, like... I'm not, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure Undertaker had a hand in this, and I'm sure that Austin and Angle and Rock and all those guys, like, if you wrote a shitty promo for them, they weren't saying the shitty promo. Yes. Nowadays, it's like, oh, I got this shit. Randy Orton's wearing a fucking lucha mask and talking about it, the Fiend burned him because he didn't want him to win the Royal Rumble? What? <laughs> That's why you burnt this fucker to a crisp I in December? Watched- I haven't watched Raw in a long, long, long time, but my buddy Sean watched it last night and was sitting in eclipse throughout of the bullshit that was going oh, on. Oh, bro. It this was the Raw, worst show. He compared it, to, compared it to the wrestling version of Plan 9 from Outer Space. Uh, he showed me the clip of Bobby Lashley stomping the ground and Matt Riddle setting his foot. <laughs> bro, that was one of the better things on the show. Like, wow, really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even mention that one time in two Raw reviews so far. That's really? how bad the other shit was. Wow. Well. Uh, going back to the whole belt thing... Not to mention that you guys didn't mention that, that it just makes a belt seem actually desirable and important. Sure. Absolutely. And apparently the other people don't care about, the other wrestlers don't care about winning belts or Kurt titles Angle does or, not give any shits about Lance Storm's belt. No. Whichever belt that might be. So Regal tells Taker that if he can persuade Booker T to put the title on the line, he can have a championship match. And... Taker says, it's fine. I will persuade Booker T. I will be get my title match. I will get my aggression out. So does this mean William Regal, the WWF commissioner, now has say over WCW championships? Did I interpret that correctly? Hmm. Because that makes zero sense. Well, yeah, I mean, there's I no just... WCW commissioner, right? That's true. I guess Shane, Shane, Shane Steph. Uh, who fucking knows? I just figured that Undertaker went and strong-armed him. Who? Booker T. To put his title on the line. Well, we'll get to that here shortly. A tough enough recap. Shadrick was not doing well, getting very emotional about it. Jacqueline felt bad for him, also got very emotional. But I guess not emotional enough because he got cut. So Booker meets with Shane and just announces, I have accepted the Undertaker's challenge for a championship match tonight. And Shane's like, what? Why? <laughs> Which I thought was a great question, honestly. Sure. And Booker says, I must prove myself to the Rock. <laughs> So, because Rock insulted him, he must accept The Undertaker's challenge for a title match. Hmm. He dissed me, he says. He had the audacity to tell people he didn't know my name. I'm a five-time champion. And as he's saying this, The Rock is watching it all on a monitor. (laughs) So, Booker T versus The Undertaker for the WCW title in the main event. God bless these men, but my favorite part of the match is Taz on commentary going on a rant about Vince McMahon not saying hello to him in a hallway. <laughs> Gosh. I suspect there was more than a nugget of truth in this rant. <laughs> so Shane's interfering constantly. I think Shane got more interference in this match than Booker did. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> there's a lot of moves we associate with The Undertaker. Chokeslams, tombstones, last rides. I don't remember Taker ever throwing a chop before. <laughs> but hmm. Booker's working him over on the floor. And he makes a big deal out of it. He holds up his hand and he gives Taker a mighty chop to the chest. And Taker sells it. And he rears back like Nolan Ryan throwing a fastball and does an overhand chop to Booker's chest and just destroys him. Nolan Ryan (laughs) is a pitcher in baseball, Brian. Yes. I know that, you idiot. His arm went like this fast with speed and force. So a thousand things happen. Taker makes his comeback. The ref gets bumped. Shane grabs Sarah. Sarah. Shane grabs Sarah by the seashore. She breaks free. Shane gets beaten. Grab your seashells? No. The Rock runs out to attack Booker. The building just explodes when The Rock comes out. Shane's brawling with The Rock. 
There's a thousand guys running in. Eventually, Taker's music just plays as Rock and Taker beat up the entire invasion by themselves. Undertaker Reign of Terror. Somebody needs to be on a Reign of Terror if Triple H is gone. We've got our man. It is the Undertaker. Yes. So this entire this WCW World Championship match only existed as an excuse to hype, promote, and build to Shane McMahon versus The Rock on Raw. Mm-hmm. That's the real match. That's the money right there. That's the one they're building towards. Bro, the the Rock could have faced meat and it would have done a giant number. So fair. <laughs> it's the Rock wrestling. He hasn't wrestled since WrestleMania. Back then, that was a big deal. Yeah, now that before, guy but got. yes, yes, yeah. yeah. No, he hadn't wrestled since Mania. I mean, night night after. I think a match. Did he? Because he talked about he talked about oh, yeah. facing Austin the night after Mania. Regardless, it's twenty four hours later, but. Dallas Page is alone in a dark room somewhere. He has now built a shrine to Sarah Undertaker. She's the all-American girl, the girl, good girl, but he knows she's a very bad girl. Guess which part of the show my wife walked into the room with. <laughs> That's fantastic. Was it Dallas Page licking the photo of Sarah Undertaker? He was about to start jacking it. What do you have to you. say about that? Thank you. That's exactly what he's going to do. It is. I know it is. Okay, I thought you were thinking I was. No, that's exactly what happened. Everybody, he said. I got nervous when he grabbed the candle. I was like, "Oh dear God!" Yes, and he said, "It's time for some private time," and he turned off the lights. Yeah, that's what it was about to happen right there. That's what we were to believe. Yes, that's yes, thank you, Brian. Thank you. But you know what I did like about this? You know what I did like about this? What he was going to feel the bang. (laughs) No, Vinny, that's not what I liked about it. (laughs) What I liked about it. Was that when this whole thing started, he was allegedly a stalker, okay? Right. Yes. But then he shows up and he, re- he reveals, I wasn't really trying to stalk your wife. Yes. I was just trying to get your attention, okay? Okay. So then, like, a few weeks later, he's a fucking stalker again. It's yes. like, I thought we had... So, finally, he explains in this segment that when this started, he was only trying to get the Undertaker's attention... But then he got the hots for her. And then fantasy became reality. Yeah. He decided he really was going to stalk her now. He so wanted to... it's ridiculous, but at least they, they at least they explained it to the fans, yes. to me. Yes, yes. When this first started, he said, I just wanted to be famous. Now I just want to be yours. And he blew out the candle, and I don't know what happened next. You can use your imagination. I do. He started, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't make me say it again. But that's what happened next. Okay? Canyon! Canyon I was buddies with Canyon. I got the inside scoop. What? (laughs) You couldn't have solved this mystery without an inside source? (laughs) Yeah. You you called Canyon. Canyon? What was EDP doing after he blew that candle out? (laughs) I'm not going to say what he said. Yeah. But you can use your imagination. You know, I'm thinking, actually, the, the, the more I think about this, and you and Canyon, this actually conversation may have happened. He this was, may be a shoot. He was going to go five rounds with the bald-headed champ, wasn't he? All right. <laughs> Are you okay? Dude, I was... When he had to record something for something, so she's downstairs recording something as I'm recording something, and Paisley just... You guys couldn't hear her screaming? No. No. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. Daddy! I go in there like some murderer broke in. She wants me to make sure that I put Littlefoot downstairs. Well, did you? Yes! Okay. We're good. Jesus. What are you so upset about? Wetting my balls off. Oh, let's talk about the train again. Anyway. <laughs> The, what does a train have to do with my daughter screaming her head off? Exactly. Well, there's a difference, Craig. Your train is on a schedule. Yeah, you should be used to it by now. She's not on a schedule. She should be. I wish she was. I'd do the show around it. <laughs> I'm having so much fun tonight. Hardy well, I'm glad somebody is. Craig <laughs> clearly boys. isn't. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. 
Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the Join button, sign up today. You can also click Subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.